it's kind of funny because I'm the hardest fucking rapper out. Ain't nobody fucking with me. I don't give a fuck. I ain't talking about no Baltimore shit. I'm talking about period. Mm. I'm a jewel that just ain't been found yet. Mm. And it's crazy because every city I go, every state I go, it feel like that. You understand what I'm saying? Like, they embrace me like that. And they, even if they ain't even heard a fucking song, they can feel it. Mm. And that's just, that's just big to me. You get what I'm saying? So when you got a motherfucker that got all this jewelry, got a uh, $100,000 outfit on, and you got little old me. I mean, I'm sorry, you got big old Gucci yeah. guy standing next one. to him, but they want to know who he, who I am. This corny ass, they want to know who Gucci Rock is, man. Put that Gucci Rock on, man. Nah, facts. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you suffer from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like, every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. All right. Oh, man. All right, I'm ready. What we drinking, man? I'm going to drink something with you. I don't know, but I got some of this Henny. You can hit this motherfucker. I don't want none of that. <laughs> he said that quick. I don't want no Henny, man. I'm good. We good. No, Jay, have a drink, yo. If I'm drinking, have a loosen up, yo. You looking? I'm loose, man. Yeah, I'm my birthday, New Year's Eve, Eve, yo. I'm loose. Yeah. Of course, damn. There we go. What's that? I don't even drink like that. I'm just having me a little sip. I'm in birthday mode right now. <laughs> Big Capricorn. Let's go, man. You ready? Yes, sir. <laughs> check, 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 check. I see my audio. I'm good. All right, man. Ready to get this thing popping, man. Jay, when I reach for my drink, do I go under or over? Just move your shit out the way. I'm glad you asked that. Just, just move it. Whenever, whenever yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, just grab the drink, drink, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, got it. I just be like this. Yeah, don't, don't. I be like, bro, move the shit out the way. Don't want, like, you don't want to break nothing you can't afford. Nah, no, no, but everybody be like that. I be like, yo, bro, just move that shit out your way. Be like, hell yeah. I be like, like bro, just limbo. move it out your way, bro. Oh, man, let's get this shit popping, man. There you go. Gucci. Yeah. How you feeling, dog? I feel blessed, Jay. I ain't, ain't gonna lie. I feel super blessed. Mm. I'm in Capricorn mode right you now. You celebrated a birthday yesterday? I celebrated my birthday, man. I went up yesterday, man. And I celebrated it here in Atlanta, too. It was Facts. crazy. What you like about it? How, how, how you feeling about Atlanta? Like, you liking it? Oh, I love Atlanta. This is my second time coming down here. The first time I came down here, I probably was, it probably was like, I say like seven, eight years ago. Mm. Probably a little longer than that. But, like, it was just crazy. The first time I came out here, I actually was uh, with Blue Da Vinci, mm. right? Some crazy. I don't know how I got with Blue Da Vinci. It was just crazy. Like, this guy, I know, he was in a, a federal um, program. He was in, locked up in the feds, and he was in a drug program. And that's how he met Blue. So when he come home, I was his little man. He took me down there with him. And it was so wild. Like, the first time, like, I ever seen a Bentley in person, it was Blue Da Vinci. Mm. It was two of them. It was a white one. It was a blue one. Lamborghinis, they were, and so that was just like from Baltimore. You see something like that, that's like what the f they into. I was telling my girl, I was literally, we was just having this conversation, eating it. And I'm like, man, Atlanta is, ne is is a necessity almost because you see so much black excellence, right? Like yeah, in Baltimore, yeah, like on the bridge, it's lit, but you don't really see it like that. And even 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 through the smoke and mirrors, right? Like I with mm -hmm. it through the smoke and mirrors because at least it's there to motivate yeah. you because yeah. if you don't know the smoke and mirrors you get what i'm saying you, you think everybody you get lost in the sauce but to be able to come to be able to see the success then to be able to understand that it's smoke and mirrors you learn so much in yeah. that right yeah, yeah. so yeah. like i i definitely think it's, it's necessary smoke and mirrors is crazy too because a lot of people don't understand like they be you you got women out here that's listening to these rap lyrics and, shit, and they talking about getting the money and fuck them and do this but It'd be other people writing them rhymes. You know mm. what I mean? I done wrote a few rhymes for people, for females. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's my point of view. It's the shit that I'm saying. 
You know what I mean? So you can't really get too much into the music nowadays because the music been infiltrated. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's just crazy. People got, they putting politics in music. Mm. You hear about Illuminati. Now, I'm from the streets. I don't know if that's real or not. Mm. But I do know when you get a certain amount of money, some people going to come see you. Mm. You know what I mean? They can rather to do business with you or is rather to extort you or just like in the streets. So, nah, facts. You know what I mean? But that, that whole smoke and mirrors thing is crazy with the music. That's why when something original come out like that Gucci Rock, it's going to go crazy. <laughs> Let them it's going to go crazy. Yo, for the that don't know, J-Hill Podcast, man. Mr. J-Hill, I'm here. Special guest in the building. Gucci Rock is in the building. It's my dog, man. You we, um, know? You know? Yeah. Been, yo, we've been, um, we been rocking for a minute, man. And I love to have these conversations with guys like this because you know it just it shows that like i ain't never gonna forget where i came from no matter no, what people no, look at and what people think you know what i'm saying this is the shit that people don't know people the people people just because the outside can't hit me and be like yo bro i'm trying to get an interview like they think i'm i'm i'm, I'm lost in the clouds it's like nah i just don't rock with you like that it just <laughs> is what it or not just it, and more so too yo it just be a frequency Mm. Some people on a whole nother frequency. You know what I mean? Nah, I got facts. people who tell me, yo, come hang out with me, yo. And I know I ain't really. I'm, I'm trying to get back to my family. I got what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, you know, if you was on my frequency, you wouldn't have to tell me come holler at you because I would see you. Facts. I would meet up with you. We, it would be some kind of way. Me and this man over here, this your partner. We yeah. just would get out here cutting a barbershop. And then I see him in Atlanta walk through the door. It's a frequency. Now, I, feel, I feel with that. It's a frequency too, but also I just don't fuck with a lot. I'm, I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> I just don't. I'm gonna just be straight up like nah, yeah. everybody can't hit my phone like yo let's do it. no bro like no that's like, big that made that made me feel good though nah, Jay, but honestly you, yo you for real nah you really was like you was there with me in the trenches you get what I'm saying when before I had all the and you know what I'm saying pulling up yeah, when I had man. the paint the paint on the back of the wall you Came know what I'm saying way, yeah and no, I appreciate it dog but that means so people like that definitely can it's open phone open door policy you know what I'm saying big, like it me. just you, you, and a lot of people don't really rock like that that's what make the whole thing with what you doing and what you got going on so genuine and it's going to be successful mm. because you never know. I mean, let's just say tomorrow, I just blow the fuck up tomorrow. Facts. Who you think I'm coming to? Facts. I hope, hopefully it's me. It's going to, nigga, <laughs> hopefully. I'm going to keep it real just like you just kept it real. No, right? facts. You know what's going on? So I got, this, I got this, um, this shit I just started, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's funny that this is, is happening because I've been looking for like a segment slash something that I can do with every single person for years okay. finally got it so you're the second person i'm doing this with and gotcha. i have a lot of time to uh, prepare because we just this is out the blue so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna i'm gonna say a word gotcha. or a statement and i need your first response or collective thoughts on it all right i got you, got you all right so the first statement is going to be baltimore cruddy cruddy filthy dirty damn that's it up damn um no opportunity cutthroat snakes Snake in the grass. Oh my God! Grass that ain't been cut. All of that. Grimy. Damn. Yeah. What about the good? The good is all the hardship and shit that you gotta go through. Cause if you could make it through all this, shit, you like a rose growing out the concrete. Mm. It's like, damn, he made it through that. Shit. Facts. He got out of that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, mm. it's fucked up everywhere you go. That's why I hate to hear like people say, "My hood fucked up. My city." Everybody f***ed up. Everybody got a story. Everybody right. got something going on. But what's authentic about you? Mm. Are you going to tell the f***ed up shit that you embarrassed about? Are you going to tell the parts that you ashamed of? Are you going to tell the parts where you did the shit, but you're not going to tell the outcome of what happened to you or your friends? That's crazy because that's actually what the platform is about, man. Um, It's about, you know, just authenticity and what makes you human, right? I, what makes you relatable? It. Like, what it. makes, why can I, why should I? With you besides all of the fame fortune you got the money the, the clothes and jewelry you got what yeah. what makes you relatable to me Why, how can i look at you as motivation and be like i can me too that shit you is me? a uniform they put on jay that's a fact it's makeup it's like, a uniform. talk all this about girls and fake bodies and makeup but niggas wearing makeup too all that change all these change they're getting their chest and dick done i mean i wasn't but i mean i'm telling you they're getting their chest and dick done it's on shade room yeah shit. i you mean I ain't gonna lie to you. I don't f get a knee extension if I could. <laughs> I ain't, f I ain't f with none of that because you get old and your body. F up, no, man. Man. <laughs> like, Damn, y'all done got my f done. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie. I'll probably get a, a half an inch on my kneecaps. I'm probably get, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'll probably get no, three quarters of an inch on my M's. Like, I'm saying. 
I feel like that might be cool, yo, until like a couple years ago. Now you turn by, 40, you done. And they telling you the they put inside your knee, that shit is going mold or something Facts. like that. No, right? See, I was talking, I'm really talking about like just the, the design of shit, yeah, the, yeah. the jewelry, all yeah. that shit is really make a is hiding behind something. But then it, it's so crazy because it seems like you have to have it though. Mm. But that's why I like being down here. Because it showed me that you don't. Like when I wasn't here, mm -hmm. I swear, I was I was ignorant to it. So I thought like I was young, I see it, I'm like, it look good, I want that. Yeah. You feel me? I'm not yeah. gonna lie, I want that. But I get here and I'm like, that's why I embrace it so much, because I see that I don't need it, because there's a lot of with it that ain't doing Yeah. It's a lot of yeah. doing it that's fake. It's, it's a uniform. You feel me? So um next thing. Uh <laughs> J, J Ray go off. Next, no, no, no. Next thing, I don't want to get, I don't want to get uh, lost in it. Yeah, J. All right, so um, what should I say first? Okay, hood politics. I think hood politics is bullshit. Mm. I think it's bullshit, but I think it's necessary. Mm. You know what I mean? Because it's some. That you know you ain't got no business doing, you know what I mean? Like just it just don't even feel right, mm. and and you know it don't feel right because you can't tell nobody. You get what I'm saying? And why you can't tell nobody? Because it's politics, and you understand it, but you choose to let me keep my shit on them. You know what I'm saying? So that means you up. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? You ain't living right. But when it come down to hood politics and you got family or you somebody that ain't in the streets or you somebody that's, you know what I mean? Just a right situation that's just f***ing right. Mm. Hood politics could corrupt that. You get what I'm saying? It could make an old lady get killed just because somebody came and stashed some shit in her yard and she called the police because she's scared because people coming in her yard. Mm. You know what I mean? Do hood politics, is that cool with that? When that situation happened, that could be your grandmother. No, be facts. my grandmother. You know what I mean? Like that that's up. You know what I mean? So that's I mean, crazy. how do you feel about that? Um, like you said, I think it's necessary because but I think when it comes to hood politics and it's like everyday life, I think we learn so much in the hood. Mm -hmm. But as children, as youngsters, we wasn't able to understand how to differentiate that from the hood to everyday life. I right? So for example, I say this, it's probably my hundred times saying this on a podcast. I, when I was growing up, my biggest thing, the biggest lesson that the hood taught me was not to be a bitch, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I associated that with, you know, not to let nobody play me, like you ain't going to disrespect me. Mm -hmm. But that's still a life lesson. Mm -hmm. But I had to understand when and when not to. I had to understand what not being a bitch was. And I'm it really it that. really was to be a man, right? And what mm -hmm. makes you a man? Taking care of your family. We talk about loyalty, right? Mm -hmm. Loyalty makes you a man. But it don't have to be loyalty to the streets. Right, mm -hmm. like yeah, it could be loyalty, loyalty to, your, to family. your family, but we we was taught this as youngsters in the hood. We just ain't understand how to differentiate or separate it from the hood to what it's supposed to be. I talked to somebody and it was like, "Yo, when I was coming up, it was by any means necessary." And I'm like, "Bro, that's that's wrong because it ain't by any means necessary." Cause I don't it, like them kind of people. You feel I me? Don't it's, want them around me. Now we like we, it was like, "Bro, it's by the right means necessary." Yeah, because I ain't about to just do anything. Because now if I'm locked up, my family ain't gonna eat, so it's contradicting. You gonna do something to me? You feel me? So that's what I think about it. Um, industry. I think the industry is kind of weird now, right? Because it was a time where you could just spit a hot 16 and you could get on. Mm. You know what I mean? Just because you're different, your verse is hot. Now, you know, you got record labels taking Megan Thee Stallion to court. And they ask, well, what did you do for her? And they bring a chain to the. You know what I mean? He said, but she, I, bought, I let her wear my chain. Mm. You, you understand what I'm saying? Like, how the f*** do that got anything to do with, you know, but if you look at society now, it's the image. Mm. So how can you get what I'm saying? It's like a borderline of, well, he did contribute to that. If this was back in the day, somebody said, get the f*** out of my face. But you look at it right now, it could potentially argue that and say, damn, because people will look at you if you got more than $200,000 chain on. You get what I'm That's saying? You watch sixty thousand dollars to glisten, and they're gonna they're gonna pay attention to you because of that. It's a different style of marketing, though. De exactly, and that's like a marketing strategy. You get what I'm saying? So the industry is kind of crazy, and then like the music, I I more so listen to older music. I listen to like DMX, Jay Z, Jada Kiss, Lil Wayne, Hot Boys, T.I.P., Jeezy, Gucci Man, Two Chains. Like I'm, I'm on all that kind of. 
you know what I mean? The Dirty Boys, See Murder, like, all that's, that's my shit. Reason being is because you can learn something from it. It's game. It's knowledge. It's not just the same old, I want to kill you. I want to do this to you. Because honestly, to be honest, like, I know I'm a rapper and shit like that. But the shit that I rap about, I'm not trying to encourage people to just murder up a motherfucking body. I'm trying to give you principles. I'm trying to give you game. I'm trying to make you understand, like, you got to take care of your family. Because when you go in that jail... Ain't nobody going to take care of your family. Ain't nobody going to do nothing they for you. They trying to take your family. Yeah, and that's what it go back to when you say about the hood politics. You got to understand, like, if you know you out in the streets and you got a family and you got people depending on you and you got to take care of them, don't put yourself in situations where that even matters to you. Mm, mm, mm. I rode by myself, so a hood politic really wouldn't matter to me because I ain't, in, I ain't doing nothing with nobody. Mm. I do by myself. You get what I'm saying? So... A politic don't matter to me. And just like with the industry, it's kind of funny because I'm the hardest f***ing rap out. Ain't nobody f***ing with me. I don't give a f I ain't talking about no Baltimore shit. I'm talking about period. Mm. I'm a jewel that just ain't been found yet. Mm. And it's crazy because every city I go, every state I go, it feel like that. You understand what I'm saying? Like, they embrace me like that. And they, even if they ain't even heard a f***ing song, they can feel it. Mm. And that's just, that's just big to me. You get what I'm saying? So when you got a mother that got all this jewelry, got a uh, $100,000 outfit on, and you got little old me. I mean, I'm sorry, you got big old Gucci yeah, guy standing next one. to him, but they want to know who he, who I am. This corny ass, they want to know who Gucci Rock is, man. Put that Gucci Rock on, man. Nah, facts. Yo, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created the morning meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now, listen, as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either one, outgrew the people around us or two, we just being lazy and weighing in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me. This is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now, you got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I'll see you there. You know what I mean? All right. So moving on. Uh, freestyle rappers. Uh, freestyle, I love freestyle rappers because that's where I come from. I come from the freestyle. Uh, I come from, say what's on your mind. Mm. A lot of people can't freestyle. You ever see the movie uh, uh, Fresh? Yeah. Remember the fall of Samuel Jackson? Yeah. He said, yeah, I compete against a lot of motherfuckers out here. A lot of people get on that chessboard. I wear their ass out. He said, yeah, you see this nigga right here? He's a champion. But put that clock on his ass. Mm. I chew his ass up and spit him out. Now, when you hear somebody say something like that, look at look at the movie. He's a bum sitting in a park that live in a trailer. But he's actually played against these people. He's mm. actually beat them already. But the people who they glorify is the big white man who got the trophies and the awards. Mm. You get what I'm saying? But the little guy that's still in the park that's playing chess, he the guy that they don't see. It that's Earl Manigault. You talking about Jordan, but this Earl Manigault we talking about. Mm. You know what I mean? So... All of that right there is, I, I'm, I'm going to go crazy, Jay. Go ahead, yo. Next question. Nah, man. I fuck with it. I, I, I love it. Do you think that um, freestyle rappers get put in a box and yeah. overlook? Well, of course you say overlook, but like, do you think they get put, put in a box and like pushed to the side? Yeah, because most of them can't make songs. Mm. You know what I mean? They can't make no records. So people look at you and they see you doing your thing on Instagram. How would they, how would you, how do you think you separate yourself from your average freestyle rapper. You know what's so funny? It's crazy you asked me that question, right? Because I do freestyles, and at any given time, one of my freestyles could go viral. Mm -hmm. Just because, like, it could be the mode I'm in, the type beat I'm on, it could go viral. But facts is, I've had four records that played nationally on different radio stations. You know what I mean? In Tampa, Florida, Augusta, Georgia, Baltimore, D.C., you get what I'm saying? I was I was on downtown locker room and rotation. I was mm -hmm. on Dash Radio. That play on the West Coast. You know what I mean? So ain't no freestyle rapper doing that. Okay. 
All right, two is I think it's two more things. <clears throat> hometown radio. I love them. Mm. I love them. I love the hometown radio because they support that Gucci rock. You know what I mean? And not just do they support that Gucci rock, but you got DJs like DJ Twisted, man, DJ Reds, who they just love getting their hands on, like, that underground shit. DJ Ray, Uncle Ray, you get what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. a lot of these guys, man, there's a lot of them that, you know, I'm sorry if I forgot y'all, man, but, you know, y'all know who y'all is, man. But these guys, when they get their hands on them records, they take it to the next level. You know what I mean? Because, you know, you ever listen to a record and... You hear it, and it's like, it's okay. But the radio played that shit so much, yeah. it's like, all right, I like it now. And then you end up hating it. But with these guys, they go get records that's timeless. Like, if you go back to my record, Drag, Drag been playing for four years now on Baltimore Radio, on DC Radio, in Augusta, Georgia, Tampa, Florida, uh, Coalition DJs. This shit been playing for four years now. When I come back out and drop this new tape that I'm getting ready to drop, like, I'm going on another run. Mm. This might be the biggest one I catch because the records I got lined up are commercial, they feel good, they street, and it's not the same or I want to kill you. Nobody want to hear that shit no more. I want to have fun. I want to no, party. Facts. I want to feel good. I, I want to ride around with my old lady and dance. I don't want to ride around. With, I got to ride with my, I'm going to ride with my, but anyway, I, I don't want to <laughs> feel like I got to ride around because shit, you know what I mean? We're going to have it. We don't want to feel like we need it. Man, listen, man, it's so dangerous. You better have it. No, nah, facts. All right, so last thing. Um, I need you to order these things from the most important to the least important to you. Okay. There's no, there's no right or wrong answer. Love, loyalty, respect. What comes first, what comes second, and what's third for you? Love, loyalty, and respect. What you got to have absolutely has to be first for you. Loyalty. Mm. Loyalty. Why loyalty? Loyalty means so much to me because you could love me and still cross me because mm. of an opportunity. I've seen it. I have people cross me because of opportunities. You know what I mean? And the opportunity wouldn't even get them nowhere. It's mm. the, they'll cross you for the thought of an opportunity. Facts. Right? So that that gets uh, the love out of there. Right? And what was the other one you said? Uh, Love, respect. Respect. I don't give a fuck if you respect me. I'm going to get my money. I'm going to do what I do. I'm going to do what I do in front of you, around you, all of that shit. So respect don't mean nothing. And me, by me performing at my highest, you know, the 48 Laws of Power, it says that you have to perform in front of your enemies the same way you do in front of your friends. Mm. You know what I mean? Which means you have to be comfortable enough to perform a hundred, a thousand percent in front of whoever. That's how you get respect. Because I know you don't care about me or care for me. You know what I mean? People don't like me. Like, I mean, for real, honestly. It seems like you're a likable guy. I can't, I, I can't really people hate the fathom fact that a thought you're that likable. people don't like you. People hate the fact you're likable. That's true. They hate the fact that people like you. That is some crazy shit. This is true. How you hate that a nigga say, no, nah, he all right. That nigga, cool. he a cool nigga, yo. How the fuck that nigga cool? <laughs> you want to know what I actually done for this man to, to solidify that I'm a cool nigga. Okay, so loyalty comes first. First. What comes second, though? Love. 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 Because you don't want to be around people and doing shit for people and with people, and it's not love. Like, people be having bad intentions. A lot of people, you don't, what people don't realize is it's a gift to be able to know who got good intentions for you. It's a mm -hmm. gift to be able to feel, like, negativity, like, you know, sheeps walk around lions all the time and they get eight. Mm. And it's like, you know, some of them will try to duck and dodge and shit like that because they could feel it. Like, it's, it's, a, fucking, it's a fucking lion, man. He, he, he going to eat me. You know, but humans will know it's a fucking lion. In order to get the fuck out of Dodge. No. <laughs> they hang around the lion. Oh, you think so? I'm yes. getting the fuck away. They hang around the lions. <sighs> they, 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 they try to think the lion, they could pet them. <laughs> no, I think that's just fucking idiots. That, that's what's going on. Like, I mean, like, circus lions. I mean, I pet a circus lion, bro. Listen, Jay, I'm not petting no lion. See, this is <laughs> what, what we're talking about. You get what I'm saying? There's no difference because this nigga in the cage locked up and doing tricks or this nigga out in the wild when he eating and surviving. Like, get your ass in that cage and see if he's just a circus lion. <laughs> see, he's yeah, going to show you he I ain't, ain't going to lie, bro. I, I fuck with 
animals more than I fuck with heights, bro. Like people be bungee jumping and jumping out of planes and shit. Oh no, facts. I ain't doing. I fuck with a a lion that's that that been in a circus or some shit. Or I, I fuck with jumping. an animal. I, I fuck with an animal. I, I thought something. about it, but I ain't. It's it's the thing of see when it come down to like being in the water and like heights and shit like that. You had no control. Facts. You can fight. You could try to fight that lion. Like you could probably like try to do something with that bear or something like that. It might get away, but. Them heights, nigga, drop your ass all the way out them clouds, <laughs> boy. Boy, you're done. You're done. That's your one wrong. You try to hit that motherfucker, that motherfucker don't, you're yeah, done. You and then know, you got time to think about it. Oh, You try nah. to figure out why this jacket ain't working. And then you thinking why you going down. I'm going to have a heart attack. <laughs> oh, a heart attack? You're going to shit on yourself. <laughs> Yo, oh, so shit. that was that was that was the segment, man. Um, like I said, you was the second person I did that with. Uh, I'm gonna do that with like everybody. No, I got I these questions. That was cool, Jay. yeah. That no, was... I appreciate you, dog. How you been, man? What's going on with you, man? Man, I've been blessed, man. I got a food truck now, right? Oh shit, man. Yeah, Gucci Grill, man. I'm going crazy. It's in Towson, right? And it was so crazy because I just really just wanted to do something with my life. I just really wanted to change my life, and you know, what I mean, just do something different. And you know, a friend of mine. You know, he was just, like, coming at me with, like, just a lot of game and shit like that. And when he gave me the game, it was like, damn, all right, let me try this out. You know mm. what I mean? But when I start having return customers, it was like, damn, this shit is better than the streets. Mm. Because you got to figure, like, most people who hustle, they're addicted to the actual hustle. Facts. It's not really the money. It's not really. It's the actual hand to hand. It's the actual building something up. It's getting clientele. It's the customers. It's the rush. Real hustlers I'm talking about. You feel me? So to actually watch my food truck have nothing going on to now, I got return customers. You know, I, I wasn't even selling tacos, right? This for all the young niggas out here listening. This game. You don't got to hustle and do the wrong shit. There's way more money out here than just selling drugs. And this Gucci Rod telling you this shit. All right, this word. My food truck was next to a Mexican food truck. And the Mexican guy, man, he was banging on me. I ain't had no customers. I'm like, man, what the fuck? I say, fuck it. I'm going to come out before he get outside. I'm outside before he get outside. And his customers now, and they looking because he ain't there. They come right. to my black ass, right? And they say, you got tacos? You got tacos? I said, fuck, I ain't got no tacos. <laughs> I said, by the mom has some fucking tacos, right? So that was 10 o'clock. I come out at 8 this time next day, right? I got tacos. I got soft shells, hard shells. I'm lined up. They come, you got tacos? I said, yes, I got tacos, right? He opening up while he see his customers over there by me, right? He said, this motherfucker, right? I can see it in his face. <laughs> now we selling jerk tacos. You get what I'm saying? Nah, like, it, it just showed, like, just how you transition. Because I was just selling jerk chicken, but it turned to the tacos because... The Mexicans was coming over. Now I got Mexican clientele, black clientele, uh, white clientele, like, you know what I mean? African clientele. And the Jamaican's funny because they oppress me. When they press me, they be like, you you, you real, really Jamaican? And I got to tell them, no, my cousin Jamaican, no. You know what I mean? He taught me some stuff. You <laughs> feel me? Some me? Shit. Yeah, but they are trying me out. But it's just, I'm basically say that to say this. Anything that you want to do, you just got to be able to see it. Mm. Nobody would ever believe, not even myself, that I would be cooking right now, that I would have my food truck and I'm ready to open up another one on the west side. Nobody would never believe that. So I'm basically saying, like, it don't matter how many times you fail, fail. Keep failing. Denzel say fail big. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because most people apply for a job, never apply to be the supervisor. They always apply to be the worker. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because your mind frame make you feel like you can't be that high up. But if you felt out that application and nobody else did, your ass would get the job. Mm, facts. We got to think big and fail big, like my man said. Like, that's just where I'm at with it, Jay, that food truck. And then I got a new project coming out. My, I got Tip 12 on there doing beats. I got AK on there, Swift AK on there. I got uh, Joan Shorty on there. Like, I done revamped. I even got my man Max. He from down here. I think Max from Savannah, Georgia. I think you're from, I'm lying, Max from Augusta. And Max got tracks on there. Like, I got a couple people that I'm working with, man, but we just ready to just blast off. How you feeling like the um the reception you're getting from the city or the love? You, you're getting a lot of love? How you feel? I'm one of them people that's private, so I don't really go too many places, right? I kind of stay on my shell. Like, you know, I, I don't go places I don't make no money at. Mm. You know what I mean? So 
when I finally start, like, really going out and, like, you know what I mean, doing what I need to do and, like, really with the food truck, I get the interactions. Like, even down here in Atlanta, like, I'm outside and motherfuckers recognize me and know my music and shit. It's, like, it's like crazy because I'm in this low-ass city. So when you see people, like, taking on to you like that and it's like, man, you know, but I'm still living a normal life. You know what I mean? These motherfuckers always acting like they the motherfucking kingpin. Like, they doing this and doing that. I got a food truck. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, uh, you know, we running a daycare. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we got good stuff going on with ourselves. Like, you know, shout out to K-Rock, shout out to Smurf. Like, you know what I mean? When they go on the road, you know what I mean? I tap in with them, try to help them out and do little shit because they my brothers. So if we could come together and build, and that's the comedy shit. I just had a comedy show with them. Chi-Chi, I'm Vonte. Like, they the comedians from my city. Like, you know what I mean? And they doing good shit. And a lot of people look at me because I'm the inventor of comedy rap. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, nah, your shit do be funny. Yeah, it's, shit. It's, it's comedy rap. You know what I mean? I never even thought about that. That's crazy because your shit do be funny as shit. Yeah, it's comedy rap. It's, I like to say real shit said through jokes. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm joking, but I, he serves as shit. Nah, you be yeah. You it's a couple freestyles. I, mean? I was like, that. Nah, that's some real shit. Yeah, but, but you laughed as you were saying it, though. <laughs> no, right. Because you thought about it, but you just didn't say it. Mm. And that's what make it so real. It's like, damn, yo, that is funny as shit. You know what I mean? And I think that's what people scared to do and be their self. Facts. I'm, I'm naturally funny. You know what I mean? But I got to be around you to just like, for you to understand yeah. my jokes, the, my humor, the shit that I'm saying. It can't go over your head. Nah, you know facts. I mean? And especially coming from Baltimore, we already like, yeah. We 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 give love different. We yeah. say fuck fuck it is dummy you dumbass all that yeah. shit. I'm too old for that shit. I ain't saying. Fucker, no, yo, look look. I ain't this, fuck it is dying. I'm too Jay, old for that shit, bro. I come down here to get some smoke. You know what I mean? My man tell me he got some smoke. I want to get high. I go get a back get get a uh, little joint. I want to get high. You know what I mean? So when I go to the nigga shit, he like, what's up with your ugly ass, right? <laughs> so <laughs> he said it again though, right? When he said it again. <laughs> I'm ready to say something to him, right? But then the other nigga walk out and say, all right, I see your ugly ass, right? Talking to him. So I'm like, oh, this must be what they say. Right. So, like, it was, like, kind of similar to us calling people dummy and shit like that. But I'm like, this nigga just called me ugly. I don't like none this of that ugly shit. ugly motherfucker. This, <laughs> ugly. this ugly motherfucker. But do you think the, um, as far as the love and shit, do you think you getting more love from, like, your peers as far as the artist, though? What about that? Uh... I don't know, yo. I mean, because personally, yo, like, I think the city be, like, more so on, you know, people personally. It's like a personal relationship. Mm. You know what I mean? And I know a couple people that I know personally, like, we work, we do shit. You know what I mean? We hang out. We, You know what I mean? There's mm -hmm. real shit going on. So it's not always about, like, the music shit. But I honestly feel like once our city really start coming together, and really get that Atlanta effect, you know what I mean? Like, because I love the artists in the city. I think they so talented, the young boys killing it, you know what I mean? And then you got them where the, the DJs is popping up now, like that 5 in the morning. Mm -hmm. Like, that shit then went viral. Puffy dancing to it and shit. Shout out to Bunky, uh, Puffy dancing to it and shit. You watching other people, like, that's that shit that was our own little, uh, it's, it's like, um, I'll joke amongst ourselves, mm. right? It's our thing. But once, like, everybody else find out about it, it's like, damn, yo, they they, they in on the, what we know about. You know right. what I mean? So to watch shit like that grow and go to the next level is, like, a blessing, yo. And I just feel like once the whole city just come together and figure out how to connect the comedy with the rap, connect the rap with the dancing, connect the dancing with the DJs, connect the DJs with the strippers, can bring it together. It's a whole. It's we we actually got something that's special. Like you watch artists that's like like rest in peace to Lil Marlo, but he put out an album called The Wire. That's big ups to the city. That mean they was tapping into what we was doing. You know what I mean? Like mm. what was I, I actually lived in Lexington Taurus as a kid. Mm. You know what I mean? I watched a, a lady throw her baby off the eleventh floor window. Mm. I watched her throw it out the window, me and my mama. You know what I mean? As a kid, I, I could remember a time where me me and my mother was kids, and we was riding on Martin Luther King at the light, and some girls pulled up. They was having a good time. I'll never forget like yesterday. They was, it was four girls in the car. They dancing and the music up, and a car pulled up behind them. The girls jump out and just start slashing these bitches. I mean, they just start slashing them up. It, it was like the craziest shit that you ever seen. 
and me and my mama jumped out to give him like towels and stuff like it i don't even know if the girl is dead or not like it was just how quick shit just happened yeah, like facts. that in the city and i'm just a kid like watching this shit happen like it's so much crazy shit like a the lady had a dug in the house and the fucking dug uh the lady died the dug got hungry start eating on the lady like you know what i mean by the time they went and found the lady she was ate the fuck up. You mm. get what I'm saying? Like, it's just crazy shit that make you strong where your skin just, like, yeah, thick. T- yeah, no, nah, facts. Man, that's why, I, um, that's why I try my hardest to continue to build my platform. And, like, even when people reach out, well, I reach back out to the city so people can see that, like, yeah. nah, niggas are still together. Like, this ain't no, I ain't racing away from the city, right? Nah, but a lot of people know. don't understand that, like, in order to put your city on, you gotta get out of your city you because you. you can't put no, you can't put nothing on within the like people. They all see you the same. The city phony as shit. You know what I'm saying? So Baltimore like, is worth more outside of Baltimore. You know, let me tell you this: what they say about water. Water is a dollar. It's free when it's in your house. You pay a bill. Mm-hmm. You go in the go in the corner to the water boy is a dollar. Go in the store one twenty five. Strip club three dollars. Airport seven dollars. The water was the same. Facts. Only thing changed was the location. location. That's a fact. I like that, man. Man, let people know uh, what where they can get your music and shit, how we can support you, where to follow you and all that, man. Oh, man, I'm on Apple, Tidal. I'm on all, all your uh, sites that you could download music from. I'm on um, Instagram, Gucci Rock 29 Y'all can find me, Gucci Rock 29 And tap in with me, because once I drop this new project, man, we going the fuck up, man. I got so many surprises coming out. You know I'm still directing the videos and stuff, man. Like... I'm just going crazy right now, Jay. This is one of them times. Tw- 23, I'm in my Michael Jordan year. Whew. We all are now. And I'm proud of you. I want to say this for the show up, man. Like, I'm super proud of you, right? I appreciate right? that, dog. And I want to give you your flowers, too, right? Because you was one of the first guys that let me come on a platform and really help my buzz at a time where I was trying to climb. Mm. And to watch you go from, you know, just building to now I'm watching you build, but you like, I want more. You know what I mean? I'm sitting up there like, damn, you the man, yo. You like, I want more. Nah, this ain't nothing. That's what make winners. Mm. When you satisfied, it's how you lose. Nah, facts. You know, I used to think it was a bad thing because I was never satisfied. When people like, you ain't never satisfied. But it's like, I'm not supposed to be. You know what I mean? I'm a winner. <laughs> nah, facts. My girl tell me that all the time, but. You're a winner. I ain't. I'm sorry, I can't deal with mediocrity. Like that shit, that shit turns me off. I, I'd rather be terrible. I'd rather be like just ain't shit mm-hmm. than mediocre. Like I'd rather yeah. just be like just a piece of shit on a car, car, curve that you kick to the side. I'd rather be that than regular. Like regular is just like disrespectful. But. Regular is phony because like you gotta understand. It's not and to some people, yo, you gotta understand if you regular, just know that you regular and be regular. Nah, fuck. because you got some regular motherfuckers acting like damn regular. And that's that's what you call mediocre. Nah, facts. You know what I mean? Facts. Well, I appreciate you, dog. I uh, appreciate you for pulling up. You know, I'm here, man. The love is mutual, Jay bro. Jay Hill, man. Mr. Jay Hill, man. Big love, man. Nah, Gucci Rock. What they say? You know? You know? It's a rap, man. Jay Hill Podcast, Mr. Jay Hill. We out. Yeah.